So now I'll talk about a number of considerations and ways I go about planning the body wings. Basically, the shape of a good ergonomic guitar has a lot, lot to, to do with how Leo Fender came up with it in the early 50s because he got it really right. And so, what, what, if you get too far out of the silhouette of what a good guitar is from a balance, from a putting it over your knee, from where your hands go, guitar players are not going to like it because it's not a comfortable guitar to hold. But you're always trying as a designer to make something look unique as well. And, and so how I've chosen to do it, I'll, I'll illustrate one of the ways. I can take a, a board. This is a heart and sap Cocobolo that's got extreme contrast in the patterning. And I'll take another, another board over here. And I can take a couple of silhouettes that I use often uh, that are my basic body shape and I can set them up and all of a sudden your mind does a whole different thing. Yes, it's still the Leo Fender shape, but it doesn't feel like that at all. You are so aware of the, the flow in, in the grain pattern that, that it becomes a very different and unique instrument. And, um, and so I always go for that. And when, when I'm working with a player, oftentimes I don't meet people. They're over the internet. I will take, I mean, you can see that set up I could slide this wood down uh, lower and come up with a very different looking uh, setup. So I'll go through many different kinds of setups uh, uh, to show, especially on a pattern like this where there's strong contrast in the wood, um, to, so that somebody has a choice as to uh, how their guitar really looks. Here's a, a bunch of tops just to show that our Wenge, a uh, quilted maple, redwood burl, uh, bubinga, waterfall bubinga pattern, koa, and spalted, spalted maple. So all of these are for orders that I've gone through this process with and cut out the, um, the left and right wing. So that's, that's just talking about the tops. And again, like the necks, my body, bodies are a sandwich. So here's a typical example. Uh, I have uh, quilted maple on the top. Wenge is a wood from the gods. It's just the growl wood. If you want your bass to be able to growl, I always put in some nice uh, Wenge. It's also clear as a bell, and it just makes the bass sound authoritative and really big. Um, this happens to be a mahogany body core that sort of mellows it a bit. And what I'm doing, I'm mixing and matching like a stew. You're adding flavor to get certain tones that you want. If a guitar was all wenge, it would have more growl than maybe you know what to do with, but you couldn't play really beautiful music with that bass. So this is a nice mellowing wood. And um, I've got the growl. And then the maple on top adds brightness. So this particular bass is going to be one that's going to cover the whole spectrum of tone. Uh, from very bright to very low to very mellow. So I've got these. I'm going to glue them together. So we're going to jump ahead. Here is another one that is now all glued together and the silhouette is cut out. And I've also, on the back, I have routed out a cavity for where the tone controls are going to go. I have a nice arc here where I'm going to put the knobs, six knobs. Once again, I'm referring right back to my drawing. And as you can see, it's all just a squared shape at this point. So the next thing I'm going to do is round and, and shape, shape the wings. And by magic, it turned into walnut, because that's what I have to show next. But this has all been shaped with bandsaw with my rasps and with multiple passes on finer and finer sanding so that, uh, so that I have all the contours that I want. And, um, and I've done all of this before gluing it onto the neck because, again, I can get to all of the, all of the shape this way easily. This happens to be a six-string neck. We're not going to worry about that. But for the sake of illustration, Here's a shaped neck that's gone as far as I'm going to take it before gluing it together. I've got my wings. I can set this down on my pattern. 
and basically there's there's my body shape and that's always a magic point when you glue the body wings finally to the neck for the first time you can really believe oh it's not just components I'm actually making a guitar here but let me flip this over and show show you something that's a, a critical thing and that is when I shape the neck I can only shape it up so far and same with the wings there's going to be a transition that will happen right here because the one of the real beauties of a neck through base is that you don't need a heel here there's no you don't have that area like a bolt on where the bolts have to to go here so when you come up to the 24th fret I can really shape the the body very deeply so that um, I, I uh, there's, there's no, you, as you go up the neck and you're up to the 24th fret, your hand doesn't bump into this heel. So after this is glued together, I draw a, a line and I do a lot more work, uh, taking off a lot more material in this area. And let me go grab a, a base and, and I'll, sh I'll show you uh, what that transition looks like. Just a sec. This particular base is at a point where all glued together, and on the back, I have drawn a, a pencil line around here, and then I've really scalloped. You can see there's no chunk right there. I've really um, pulled away a lot of material on these wings as well, and, and pulled it back so that it's a very smooth transition into the, into the body of the guitar. So now, when I, when I go to play, here's the 24th fret. I can go right up to the top very cleanly and easily my thumb just glides right along and uh, it really it feels seamless there's no there's no problem going up high on the neck another thing that I do also is I drill little bitty holes along here and put the the markers inlay little dots for the markers uh, of the fretboard most fretboards I leave clean uh, occasionally somebody wants their initials or they want dots or something on the fretboard but for the most part I use really beautiful woods and people don't want to mess with the grain pattern you'd just rather have it be a clean surface and all your references on the edge anyway.